السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Dear viewers, welcome to our new episode of Youth Matters. Youth Matters is a series related to youth in particular, but obviously the lessons are in general. Youth Matters is a series which has an objective to highlight the importance of our beloved youth in the Ummah as they can make a big, big difference uh, in a positive sense and bring up the society in a, po in a peaceful way, inshallah. Again, I'm joined with the brothers out here. We have Ahmed, we have Ali, uh, we have Musa, and we have Idris. All of us together are here for you, the youth, to ensure that we bring up something that is nice, that is beautifully uh, you know, structured for you to improve upon. Today's topic, inshallah, that we will be dwelling in is communication skills. I am sure that we all, especially the youth, hop around here and there to learn the art of communication, to art, the art which we, everyone wants to master. But we face challenges, we have hurdles and obstacles. Let us, inshallah, together try to uh, you know, focus on this discussion that we shall have uh, together, inshallah. Uh, but before that, let us have uh, a look at this clip pertaining to the communication skills. Anas, he worked for the Prophet ﷺ for so many years and he grew up with him as from a boy. And he said, all these years that I worked with the Prophet, peace be upon him, he, didn't, he never even said to me, oof. He never complained. He was never rude to him. So we see that the, the way that the Prophet ﷺ was with people and the way his character was, was a very good character. And he taught us. He said, whenever you come across a person, he told them, smile to the people. And he told us that smiling to them is actually an act of charity. And we see that Abdullah ibn Harith said that I never saw a person who would smile so much as the Prophet So we can see here we're being taught to be welcoming, to be friendly, to be kind, to have good manners. And the Prophet also, he emphasized on the importance of saying salam giving greetings. We know that the more you, the longer your greeting is, the more your reward you get. You say, Salaamu Alaikum, you get 10. You extend it, you get 10. You extend it more, you get 10. So the emphasis here, and think about it. This is an everyday life now. Even if you go into the corporate world, just like uh, Brother Faris, you come from a corporate background. I used to work in Dubai world, for example. So you work in a corporate background, it's very important as they say, first impressions last. And this is the same as a Muslim. Imagine now you're coming to a non-Muslim and you're a practicing Muslim. Imagine you respond to that non-Muslim in a bad way. What would he think about Muslims and Islam? And that's something as well. We have this attitude as well, many Muslims, that we treat non-Muslims badly. And again, if we see from the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he treated non-Muslims in a good way. He was respectful to them. He was always smiling, whether they were non-Muslims or Muslims. He always had the best of characters, the best of communication. We know that we're supposed to shake hands. Every time we shake hands, this is a way that we lose our sin. It's not just a formality that we go through, just shaking the hands to get it over and done with. When we shake hands, sins are removed from us. My brothers and sisters, communication is indeed the reflection of your personality. How you speak, how you behave, how you carry yourself conveys your personality, right? So I think this is the topic that every one of us will enjoy and especially the youth, the viewers, uh, who will uh, enlighten uh, uh, about the discussion that we will have, inshallah. Um, can we shed some light on <coughs> the guidelines, maybe the Islamic guideli guidelines on uh, communication and how can we be effective communicators? Uh, maybe some examples of the eloquence of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Right, now, as we always go back to the, you know, our book of recipe, you know, book of living, the Quran and the teachings of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what we find is communication is actually a process. A process where you have a sender, a person who communicates. And this sender has got 
uh, a message to deliver and delivering the message he uses certain means and that's how the receiver receives the message and the way the receiver receives the message you actually get the feedback so this process of where the, the sender the uh, message the means and the receiver receives he gives the feedback when we study the Quran and the teachings of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we find that there are numerous uh, uh, you know teachings and principles <coughs> pertaining to communication you know uh, let me first put it in a very broader way that communication is just not speaking communication is <coughs> your character you know for example the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he used to carry smile always you know and he said one of the highest ways of charity is smile carry smile so as Muslims we need to have that and this is kind of you know lost thing in our lives that we don't see uh, Muslims smile you know and some of the sections of the people in the world they feel that Muslims the Arabs and the Muslims they don't smile you know they have that kind of notion you know they are like serious you know uh, studious people kind of thing so it's not like that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the most smiling person he has to uh, he carried the smile on his face so uh, the whole character starting from your face your expression your, your your eyes all these are a part of communication but the most important of all is your tongue Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has created us as the one who will speak you know and he, he gave the guidelines how we should speak the first guideline we get from the Quran from Surah Bani Israel Allah says Qawlan Karima Allah so talks about the ways how we actually have to have as guidelines in order to speak Qawlan Karima pertaining when it comes to your parents Qawlan Karima speak you know in, in, in nice in noble way that is Qawlan Karima and we have Qawlan Sadida that is speak straightforward <coughs> you know you have you have to have the art of sometimes saying no to people you know at times what we do is we take the commitment and we don't fulfill that commitment so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about communication skills requires trustworthiness and honesty when you speak speak straightforward so we have Qawlan Sadida. We have Qawlan Layyina, you know, something which is gentle. You know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put you know, Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam to go and talk to Fir'aun, he says Qawlan Layyina, you know, which means speak gentle, you know, in a, in a, in a nice way. And we know Fir'aun was the one who was the most deviant of all, right? He was the one who declared himself to be Lord. And to Fir'aun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, when you speak, speak in a gentle way. We have qawlan ma'roofa. You know, when we have uh, the uh, eloquence of speech, we have to have that, that kindness when we speak, especially when it comes to our own family members, our own wives. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the best one is, uh, is the one who is best to his wives and I am the best to, to my wife. And we know the way we speak determines how best we are with our wives. So, qawlan ma'rufa. And in general, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to all of us to speak to the people in a husna, you know, in a, in a nice, in a good manner. So, we learn these guidelines in order to understand us that we practice it in our lives. When we have these guidelines, especially from our tongue, you know, which is the most significant weapon of communication. That's the reason Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, take care of your tongue. Take care of your tongue. You know, this is something which can keep you inside Jannah or it can keep you out of Jannah. So taking care of tongue and he, that's the reason, no wonder he said such a, such a beautiful and powerful statement those of you who take care of what is between your jaws and what is between your limbs which means your tongue and your private parts I guarantee Jannah for you so when you follow these guidelines the effective communication and the efficient communication will come in place inshallah 
Yeah, actually, there is a question here um, or a matter needs to be addressed. Like, in, you know, in some certain cul uh, cultures, there is uh, perhaps or forbidden for the children to talk to the elders. And also, there is something which is a lot of people, maybe like the teenagers or even m m like the adults, ha have something called fear of public speaking. How can let the people break the ice, communicate well with the others? Right. Now, this is something which... Uh, we as a ummah, especially the youth face, that they are not very confident mm -hmm. when they actually try to speak, uh, especially when you have a bunch of people, you are not able and capable to speak to them. The fundamental thing that we actually can impart a as a solution for them is to uh, I inherit the qualities of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The way that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to speak, it was like Jawami Al Kalam, as we say, you know, precise and concise speech. You know, with one simple phrase, he will give the essence which will value, you know, in our lives. You know, for example, he said, At taqwa ha huna, at taqwa ha huna, at taqwa ha huna. Your taqwa lies in your heart. Taqwa is here, taqwa is here. So, he didn't speak, you know, for hours, for example. He just gave a phrase. And that means so much to us. And that's how we basically, uh, you know, share with our children as well the techniques of, uh, you know, public speaking, the techniques of communication. That involves certain qualities. For example, an effective communicator is the one who speaks the truth. The one who is a liar, you know, he does not uh, get into that level of confidence because he knows that he's not speaking the truth. I know, I mean, there are certain confident liars as well, but then, uh, you know, they come as an exception. But then in general, in general, especially among the kids, because they are innocent, they fear the people than Allah. We need to impart this taqwa element in them that look, your, your father can't do anything. I being a father, I teach my children. Look, if I'm there, I'm not there. Good remains good, bad remains bad. So this is how we communicate and get connected with our kids. A lot of times what happens, we create a culture where kids cannot speak to the elders. They're not allowed to correct, to rectify or even to speak for some, you know, for some reasons. So we need to break this culture slowly but surely and give the scope to our youngsters, to our children, to our kids to have the access and free, uh, you know, freedom to, to speak out. Unless they speak, they can't do much on, on, on capability of, of getting, uh, you know, a com uh, uh, on communication, right? Inshallah, brothers and sisters, we shall continue our uh, discussion right after a short break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers, to our interesting discussion that we are having on communication skills. And we mentioned that communication skill lies in the honest speech. The more honest you are, the more effective the communication uh, will be. And uh, we, we get to know that from the life of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he always spoke the truth. And he instructed, as mentioned in the Quran, that always be with those who are truthful. So when you are truthful, obviously your confidence level will gain. And th th that's the point that uh, Ahmad, you have asked, uh, how we can instill the confidence is instilling the good qualities in them and giving them the platform and opportunity to the youngsters to perform. If they don't get any platform, they have no opportunity to pla uh, you know, perform. And if they don't have an opportunity to perform, obviously they can't be productive in their own communication. Mm. I have a question because you, you just brought up about speaking the truth and how important is it that the, the youth actually speak up against, you know, uh, uh, for justice and for those people who are, are, are weaker than them when no one is speaking, um, is speaking up for them? And, and how, how should they do this type of thing, especially right. in this day and age where people might be afraid to do it? Or Absolutely. I mean, youth is the age, as we said, that they have energy level, they have strength, they have, you know, good mindset. If they come to, uh, uh, you know, a, a kind of a ma mindset, where they can actually add value to anyone's life, they should do so. But there are ways that we can actually, uh, you know, guide them with, where they have a structured way of helping out people. 
Standing up for justice is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsan. Allah instructs you to, to have that element of justice and that have the element of goodness in your life. So it's kind of a lifestyle of every Muslim to be just. And Allah says, stand firmly for justice. Even if the justice goes against yourself or your parents or the one who is close to you. And fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear Allah. Because most of the times what happens is, you know, we don't do justice uh, when it comes to close ones. You know, we take our own people's side. And that's where we actually stray away. Allah instructs us in the Quran. Let not your love for someone sway you away from doing justice. So obviously the youth needs to stand up for justice for the welfare of the people. And how we can do that? Youth needs to come up with projects. Projects should be based on the needs. Needs are identified uh, very clearly. For example, I was talking to uh, some of the brothers out there before the show and he was saying there's a huge problem of education proper education and employment health care you know uh, counseling you know and counseling of, of youth for sure in different aspects these are kind of problems <coughs> if we identify these problems youth know about these problems and youth you know i was i was very saddened by by listening the feedback that there is a huge rate of unemployment. You know, there are capable people, but there are no opportunities. So these people, when they are free, the youngsters, when they are free, they are in hunt of looking at the job. Meanwhile, they should take out at least an hour or two and invest their time in projects like education. I was talking to, uh, you know, one of the TV talk shows. I was mentioning the projects that they can take in back in India or elsewhere is if the, the bunch of youth, let's say 10 youth, they are dedicated, they are talented and they are determined to make a difference in people's life in a positive way, they should take care of one society for example. In that one society if there are 100 homes, no home should have an employed person. Unemployment leads to destruction many a times. So they create opportunities, they have the investment on, you know, uh, teaching people in uh, some of the you know uh, backward countries where there there is poverty is a, is a big issue the children obviously they don't have an opportunity to go and educate themselves so these youth they can actually take up those kids and give them education so there are so many ways that actually youth can uh, apply their strength their talents their 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 education and they can make a big big difference and that's how we basically uh, begin by saying when they communicate well they can execute well when they can execute well we can see the results are outstanding mashallah yeah uh, this is great sir uh, I think that we have started to talk about the, the, the concept of uh, communication and how to be you know adequately sometimes eloquently uh, communicator and the fact that we are now yielding for second language third language and the more languages you speak I mean the more opportune you are to get boundless and countless opportunities and job opportunities to, to to carry out my point is that I mean that we are in this kind of competitive I mean arena of uh, the more you get the more quality you have the higher quality you have the more skillful you are the more likely you are to be employed yeah. i mean how is it uh, advisable for muslim youth i mean muslim to be able to acquire as many languages as possible i learned that during the life of prophet muhammad may the peace and blessings of allah be upon him he asked some, he delegated some of the companions to travel elsewhere, to travel to different nooks and, and, and different, you know, corners and cavity of the world to learn languages, Ethiopia, Rome, and so many other countries. H how is it good for young people to acquire second, third language? And how is it important for young Muslim and Absolutely. I mean, when we talk about communication, we talk about, uh, you know, the speech. In the speech, we know there are different languages. 
languages which are native languages, languages which are foreign languages. Uh, we see uh, a classic example of Zaid bin Thabit radiallahu anhu in the life of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He asked Zaid bin Thabit radiallahu anhu to learn Hebrew and Syriac languages in order that he can actually communicate with the people who are Jews, with the people in Syria, with the people in their own language. And that's the beauty of Islam that Allah Rabbul Izzah, in fact, he says in Surah Al Rum that all the languages are the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the different colors, different languages, different nationalities, they are the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah give a golden rule in Surah Al Hujurat. Allah Rabbul Izzah, he says that mankind has been created from one single pair of male and female and then Allah made it to nations and tribes and Allah gives the purpose لِتَعَارَفُوا so that you may know each other you know the best way to get inside the heart of the person is through his language we see that we experience that you know uh, when we speak uh, you know usually when I travel and I if I'm invited recently for example in Kenya if I'm going to Kenya and I speak Kenyan language, you know, for example, even a couple of statements, they will grab the attention, right? So it, there is an effect of communication when you learn <coughs> languages. And Allah Rabbul Izzah in Islam, He allows us to do so. So youth must make sure that they attain and the mastery of learning different languages as much as they can, especially the language of the Arabic especially the language which is predominantly spoken like English, where they can do effective da'wah across the globe. So, so, so now it's, it's good and it's com it's, we can say that it's conversant that one should learn, you know, a foreign language. But uh, I, I'm just trying to cast light on the fact that some of the young generation consider this as uh, mechanism or as a means to go arrogant for example a friend who speaks another language will feel that he is uh, a predominant he's uh, he's he has some kind of superiority open his own brother who is less good in you know is less eloquent in speaking i mean how is this uh, how can we use this tool to work for islam instead of seeing that we are senior or we are more prioritized than our brother. Sure, it goes it back is. all uh, why they learn the language. Mm. You know, the reason, uh, the intention, mm. why they learn the language. <coughs> you know, because the way you intend, the way uh, it will impact your actions. So, Muslims in general, we are there to be humble, to have that good intention of everything. And we need to have that very, very clear understanding that for every matter we include the element of sincerity that it is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Undoubtedly with the added language I'm going to earn more perhaps. That's from my, uh, you know, nasib. That's from my destiny. But then if I'm intending this for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one, <coughs> I'm becoming his beloved. Because sincere people who do things for Allah are beloved of Allah. Number two, I am actually assuring the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in learning that language. And thirdly, I am always you know, benefiting from that language in this dunya by getting the livelihood for, for example. So it's all depend on the reason, the objective why I am learning. When I know the objective is for Allah, sincerity will help all of us to govern our actions permanently because it's motivated by Allah and it is always humble. Yeah, actually, like um, as we st I studied this matter before, like how to communicate with people in an effective way. So we studied how to build a rapport with the people and also at the same time to make a kind of engagement and so on uh, by the eye looking and so on. But the question here, do you think like choosing the voice tone um, has like a kind of effect on the conversation or even communication skills? Do you think like the communication by choosing this kind of voice tone will affect I either badly or in a good way? Absolutely. You know, that's the reason we see that, for example, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to repeat things thrice in order to derive the attention of the uh, people. And the way that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do is to first and foremost listen to people. 
you know the uh, the fundamental uh, effectiveness of communication is listening well as we say listening well is half answering you know most of the people they don't want to listen they just want to talk and talk and talk they don't want to listen so at the end they actually end up in saying something which is not actually accurate so listening well seeing the person attentively as the prophet sallam he used to turn around the person today if you are speaking i am on the mobile yes yes tell me tell me tell me this is the behavior that we have but the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to look in the eyes of the people to show that he is a sympathetic listener and this is how we learn from the lifestyle of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so listening well having good uh, eye contact the tone should be managed properly and the way that we volumeize our uh, our uh, you know uh, tongue volume it, it should be balanced again and uh, there are again lot many things to talk about communication skills in an islamic perspective but brothers we are end up with the time again uh, thank you so much for your presence over here dear viewers thank you so much i am sure that uh, inshallah you have uh, benefited uh, with what we have actually discussed in an islamic perspective islam is a is a whole uh, you know <laughs> way of life that gives you teachings uh, on every dimension of your life inshallah we shall continue to talk about other important topics related to youth the youth matters uh, in the coming episodes until then we take a leave from you assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh